Hey everyone, I have another cool new segment on some ancient discovery made in Myanmar Amber. You know, I've been doing these news things for just a couple years, and while I cover all sorts of biological stuff, I feel like I get one of these new Amber deposit stories almost every week. I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. I think it's awesome. It's awesome that we can just slowly dig through a Myanmar Amber deposit and make discovery after discovery, building a high-definition picture of life in the late Cretaceous, a hundred million years ago. All right, so what do we have this time? According to a scientific paper published recently in the journal Nature, scientists have found, quote, an exceptionally well-preserved and diminutive bird-like skull that documents a new species, which we name Oculodentavis congrae, unquote. And when the researchers say that this skull is diminutive, they really mean it. The skull is really small. So small, in fact, that the discovery, quote, appears to represent the smallest known dinosaur of the Mesozoic era, rivaling the bee hummingbird Melisuga heleni, the smallest living bird in size." Unquote. The full body of the dinosaur is barely 15 millimeters long, and it weighs less than a tenth of an ounce. Now, the researchers go on to describe many of the dinosaur's features, and they suggest the kinds of functions that they might serve and the behaviors that they enable. For example, they determined that this tiny dinosaur was a predator that likely hunted insects. They were able to make this inference because the skull was largely fused, which means that it can endure more pressure, which means that the animal can exhibit more bite force without hurting itself. And you really only see this in predators where having a large bite force is important. For that matter, its beak was also lined with lots of tiny sharp teeth, presumably used to capture puncture and slice apart their insect prey. The tiny dinosaur had very large eyes, but small pupils, which suggests that it was a hunter that was active during the day. If it was active during the night, it would have had larger pupils to take in more light. Jinhai O'Connor is a paleontologist with the Chinese Academy of Scientists, and he was a co-author of the paper. Dr. O'Connor said, quote, Ocula dentavis was just weird. The fact that the skull is very fused, the fact it has lots of teeth, the fact it has these really big eyes, all suggest that despite its teeny tiny size, it was a predator." Unquote. Lastly, the researchers discuss the ecological situation that would produce such a small body size. They write, quote, "...miniaturization most commonly arises in isolated environments, and the diminutive size of Ocula dentavis is therefore consistent with previous suggestions that this amber formed on an island within the Trans-Tethian Arc." Unquote. This basically means that this little dinosaur lived on an island along the southern coast of Asia before the Indian subcontinent had moved in to create the Himalayan mountains. This isolated island environment created the perfect ecological laboratory for a vertebrate species to evolve smaller and smaller body sizes. Lars Schmitz is a biologist at the W.M. Keck Science Department, and alongside Dr. O'Connor, Dr. Schmitz was also a co-author of the paper. Dr. Schmitz said, quote, Amber preservation of vertebrates is rare, and this provides us a window into the world of dinosaurs at the lowest end of the body size spectrum, unquote. So this is a really exciting little find, no pun intended. It's a window into the late Cretaceous, 99 to 100 million years ago. We see a little bit of this ancient world, preserved in a small amber time capsule. And the best part is, there's a lot more where this came from. There's actually a backlog of amber samples left to study. And according to Dr. O'Connor, we should quote, stay tuned for more discoveries. We just gotta dig through this amber piece by piece, and the awesome discoveries will just keep coming.